All right, go back and share. So what I was showing you is that, is that the word of the Lord came to me, this Jeremiah 1, saying, before I formed you in the belly, I knew thee, and before you came as out of the womb, I sanctified thee and ordained thee a prophet to the nation. Then I said, Ah, oh, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. Well, when people see that, they think that he was a little child, and that's that was the English at that time. So let me click here, and you'll be able to see what that word in Hebrew, a lad, an adolescent, a young man, see? So we're not talking about somebody like your grandson, okay? And he says, um, he said, for you will go to all I send you, and whatsoever I command you, you shall speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with you to deliver thee, saith the Lord. So if God tell you I'm with you to deliver you, that means somebody going to have you, right? Ain't no point being there to deliver me if ain't got nothing to be delivered from. Are you are you following are you following the sequence of what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. I'm writing notes. Then it says, Then Yahweh put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said, or again, when you when you see me, when I say Yahweh, I click here, you'll see that Yahweh. Or people say Yahweh, that lets you know that those letters represent that. Those are the four Hebrew letters, Yod, He, Wah, He. Okay, so then Yahweh put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And Yahweh, notice in verse 9, then Yahweh put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And Yahweh said, behold, I put my words in your mouth. But notice how it started. The word of the Lord came to me. So we think it's like he came like in a vision or just spoke to him. I was just showing you that so that you can kind of wrap, wrap your mind around the 32. 32, it says, then the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah from Yahweh, or the word that came to Jeremiah from Yahweh in the 10th year of Zedekiah, king of Judah, which was the 18th year of Nebuchadnezzar. So it lets you know. That Zedekiah had been in charge 10 years because he had been putting people up, setting them down, putting them up, setting them down because he had brothers. So it was the 18th year of Nebuchadnezzar that Zedekiah, this, this is taking place. For the king of Babylon's army had besieged Jerusalem. So Nebuchadnezzar's army, what it had done, he had besieged, he had like made it where they can't go in and come out. In other words, you all are in bad shape because we we don't want you getting no trade, no food, no money. You've been besieged. Follow me? All right. Then it says, And Jeremiah the prophet was shut up in the court of the prison, which was the king of Judah's house. For Zedekiah, king of Judah, had shut him up, saying, So Zedekiah took the man of God and locked him up. Yet these people... They don't want nobody to even say anything about them because they're the man of God. Don't speak against God's anointed. Zedekiah had locked Jeremiah up in the prison. See? Right there, the prison. Mm -hmm. Make the letters be okay. In the prison, in the king's, in the king of Judah's house. For Zedekiah, king of Judah, had set him up saying, Wherefore do you prophesy and say, Yahweh? Or the Lord, behold, I will give this city into the hand of the king of Babylon, and he shall take it. His, the king didn't like that Jeremiah was saying, God going to overthrow this city, this city that I run. And I don't want you to say that. It's like you speaking negatively. It says, surely it shall be delivered to the king of Babylon and shall speak with him mouth to mouth. So the king is going to overthrow Jerusalem and the king of Judah will not escape from the Chaldeans because that um, Nebuchadnezzar is a Chaldee living over there in Babylon and he shall surely be delivered to the hand of the king of Babylon. You are going to be given to the king of Babylon, our enemy, and you shall speak with him mouth to mouth and his eyes shall be, be his eyes. Is that a guy? 
Yeah, Zedekiah gonna get to see the king of Babylon eye to eye. Yeah, that's Nebuchadnezzar. Right. Nebuchadnezzar. And it says, and he shall lead Zedekiah to Babylon. He gonna take you into captivity. But he said, that was Jeremiah telling uh, yeah. Zedekiah. And, Zed and Zedekiah don't want, Zedekiah saying, you saying this and I ain't, and I ain't with that. And, and that's why you're in prison. And she'll be there till I visit him, saith the Lord. Though you fight with the Chaldeans, you will not prosper. So from the vantage point of Zedekiah, you speak in a negative confession. You ain't speaking positively. You you putting bad mouth on me. See how they look at it and not as God. And Jeremiah, and Jeremiah said, the word of the Lord came to me saying, I know what you don't want me to say, but I look at you and I look at him. And instead of me saying, okay, I said, the word of the Lord came to me saying, behold, Hanamel, the son of Shalom, thine uncle, shall come to me saying, Okay, God is saying, Himaniel, the son of Shalom, your uncle shall come to you saying, buy thee a field that is in Anathoth. Yeah, who uncle is he? That's the that's the uncle of Jeremiah. Let me <laughs> let me take it from King James, put it in another version. Give me we could go Hanamel and let me put up Legacy Study Bible. <laughs> All right, so behold, Hemaniel, the son of Shalom, your uncle, is coming to you saying, buy a field for yourself, my field, which is an Anathoth for you, for you have the legal judgment for the redemption to buy it. You're kin to me. It'll still be in the family. Remember, Ahab wanted to buy that land from Naboth, and Naboth couldn't sell it. Mm -hmm. It was legally okay. It says, then, then it says, Hanamil, see, H-A-N-A, Hemaniel. My uncle's son come to me in the court of the guard, of the guard, the, according to the word of Yahweh, and said unto me, By my field, please. That is an Anathoth, which is in the land of Benjamin. For you have the legal judgment for the possession and the redemption is yours. Buy it for yourself. Then I knew this was the word of Yahweh. In other words, the word was fulfilled. And I bought the field, which was an Anathoth from, Han from Hanamel, my uncle's son, and I weighed the silver for him, 17 shekels of silver. And I signed and sealed the deed and called in witnesses and weighed out the silver on the scales. I got witnesses because everything that's done in the mouth of two or three witnesses under the Torah, everything is established. Then I took the deeds of purchase, both the sealed copy containing the commandment and the statutes and the open copy. Then I took the deeds that I purchased it, both the sealed copy and the commandment and statutes and op and the open copy. So I got two copies, one sealed and one that's not. And I gave the deed of purchase to Baruch, the son of Neriah, the son of Ma, Siah, and in the sight of Hanamel, my uncle's son. In other words, my cousin. And in the sight of two witnesses who signed the deed of purchase, in the sight of all the Jews who were sitting in the court, Okay, of the guard. So I got two witnesses to sign. Everybody seen it. And I commanded Baruch in their sight, saying, Thus say Yahweh of hosts, the God of Israel, take these deeds, this deed of purchase, that is the sealed one, and this, the open deed, and put them in an earthware jar. Okay, the, they that may last a long time so put them in an earthen jar that they may last a long time don't get wet don't you know don't mess up don't rot but thus say Yahweh of hosts the God of Israel houses and fields and vineyards again will be bought in this land we're talking about a land that he's saying is already besieged we are talking about with the king gonna be taken into captivity this land gonna be desolate but he's saying, showing hope that one day they're going to be able to, they go, it's, people are going to have houses in this land. They're going to have fields. They're going to have vineyards. In other words, prosperity going to come back. Any questions? Mm -mm. 
It says, after this, I had given the deed of purchase to Baruch, the son of Uriah. And when I prayed to Yahweh, saying, Oh, Lord God, Yahweh, behold, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and by your outstretched arm. Nothing is too difficult for you. It's not too difficult for you to, to let me get the land back. It's not too difficult for you to make it where houses and fields and vineyards would be. But, and so I'm praying and I'm saying this. I'm saying nothing is too difficult for you who show loving kindness to thousands, but repays iniquity to the fathers and to the bosom of their children after them. Oh, great and mighty God, Yahweh of hosts is his name. You see in this version, it say Yahweh, right? Mm -hmm. I click on it. There it is right there. See, Yahweh of hosts is his name. Great in counsel. Talking about Yahweh, he's great in counsel, the advice he gives to tell you how to live, what to do, abundant in deeds, whose eyes are open to all the ways of the sons of men, given to everyone according to his ways and according to the fruit of his deeds. In other words, he's saying you judge righteously. They're not hiding anything from you. Everything is naked and open. Twenty who has set signs and wonders in the land of Egypt. And even to this day, both in Israel and among mankind, you have made a name for yourself as it is to this day. All this stuff with the 10 plagues in Egypt, the stuff that you did when you brought us out, when we took over the land of Agabashan and Sion, and what we've done in Baal Peor, and all of the different things when David fought against the giants, and you've made a name for yourself both in Israel and among mankind, so much so that Rahab the harlot say we scared. You made a name for yourself this day. You brought your people Israel out of the land of Egypt with signs and wonders and with a strong hand, with an outstretched arm and great terror. When they talk about terror, it's talking about fear to be afraid, not to just have reverence. And you gave them, or he gave them this land, which you swore to their fathers to give them a land flowing with milk and honey. You ever heard of milk and honey? I bet you have. Mm -hmm. Now he done closed down a couple of his restaurants. Hey, you went, you went feeding from the most high. Then <laughs> came in, they came in and took possession of it. So you brought it to the land of milk and honey. And they, when you brought them to the land, they took, they came in and took possession of it because he drove the other people out. But they did not. Here's key. But they did not what? Look at it. You see what? You see the problem? Mm -hmm. I'll make it big. I see it. It's, I made it bold. <laughs> now I'm going to make it big. Make it big, Tim. Now make it big. Mm, mm, mm. You supposed to got big. Cause I, cause that, I need that because when I go back through it myself, I like my eyes to be able to pick up on it right away. I don't like to have to wait. I don't want underline. Okay, so you. I'm, I'm going to just software around you. I probably could get you self about 100, something, maybe 200. You, you do the same you thing like that. Huh? You do the same thing. You do a lot of it, you know, because, I mean, look at, let me show you something. I've been doing this since it was called Libronics. You see how many, I got this many in mind. See that? Mm -hmm. So I've been doing this for a lot of years. So it just add up, add up, add up. So, but anyway, let's go back to where we were. Get out of this library. All right. I'm, this thing didn't do what I wanted to do, and I ain't playing with it. That, okay, let me, I'm trying to do something with a highlight. So that's highlighting right there. It wouldn't let me, It like it's like it was going to say, you can't do more than one. And I don't, I don't appreciate that because this is very important to me because this is to me the major thing that people don't do. There we go. But they did not listen to your voice. That's what I was talking about today. 
They did not listen to your voice and did not walk in your law. Torah, the collection of his rules, what he gave Abraham. He says, they have not done anything that you commanded them to do. Therefore, you made all this harmful evil come upon them. It wasn't karma. It wasn't bad luck. It was God. Behold, the siege ramps have come to the city to capture it. The city is given to the hand of the Chaldeans who fight against it because of the sword, the famine, and the pestilence. These are three things that God used to judge Israel. These are probably the same three things he's going to use to judge America. The sword, war, famine, because when you have war, you can't get supplies in, and then pestilence, disease. So when you see disease or dabar, plague, it says the sword, famine, and pestilence, and what you have spoken has happened. Behold, you see it. And you have said to me, and you and you have said to me, O Lord God Yahweh, buy for yourself the field of money and call witnesses. But the city is given to the hand of the Chaldeans. Then the word of Yahweh came to Jeremiah saying, so when he said he came to him, I, I know he came one time when he came to him physically. I cannot tell if every time it says this here, he's done it physically, but we should at least allow for that. Came to me, it came to me saying, Behold, I am Yahweh, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Therefore, thus saith Yahweh, Behold, I'm, I'm about to give this city to the hand of the Chaldeans, to the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. He will capture it, and the Chaldeans who are fighting against this city will enter it and set this house, look, and set this city on fire and burn it with the houses where people have burned incense to Baal. They're going to burn down the places where they have committed adultery against him with Baal. It ain't just random places. He said they're going to fight. Those that are fighting against this city will enter it and set this city on fire and burn it with the houses where people have burned incense to buy all in their, uh, on their roofs and poured out drink offering, wine offerings to other God to provoke me to anger. Imagine how many churches and things that have done their Christmas. Imagine how many churches and things that have done their Halloween. Imagine what cities and things do pride marches. And, and we don't think that you know, if God doesn't change, we could expect something like that in in our future, or at least in our children's future. Mm -hmm. They burned incense to buy all on the roof, poured out drink off to other God to provoke me to anger. A lot of black people pour libation to the dead ancestors. The dead ancestors of the spirit, same thing. Mm -hmm. It says, indeed, the sons of Israel and the sons of Judah have been doing only evil in my sight from their youth. For the sons of Israel have been provoking me to anger by the work of their hands, declare Yahweh. Indeed, this city has been to me a provocation of my anger and my wrath from the day they were from the day that they built it, even unto this day, so that it should be removed from my face. Here's a God that's been gracious to them and gave them the land. Talking about he ain't no grace. Had mercy on them all these years they've done this. But he said, I was watching. He said, you did that in my face. You thought you thought I wasn't going to bust a grape. But now I'm getting rid, I'm getting ready to make wine out of it. You ever hear him talk about the wine, the cup of the cup of the wrath of the wine of God? Talk about it in Revelation. But it says, even to this day, that they should be removed from my face because of all the evil of the sons of Israel and the sons of Judah, which they have done to provoke me to anger. They, their king, look at this. Look at this. The sons the men of Israel, the sons of Judah, the men, their kings, the leader, the men, their princes, the son, their priests, the Pope, the man of God, and their prophets. The men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, we men don't lead. Sometimes our women lead better than we do. We don't lead. And the sign of a nation is under under God's curses when a woman leads and rules. That's what America's shooting for. But anyway, it says their princes, their prophets, and the men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and they have turned their back to me and not the face. And though I taught them rising early in teaching, they would not listen or receive discipline. But I don't they, think it's they, biblical then. Huh? You don't think it's biblical for her to be in that spot? Who? Kamala. No. 
I don't have to think. Look at Isaiah chapter 3. All right. When God is talking about what they've done, and I will give their children to be their princes. I'm going to put your children over you, and babies shall rule over them. Look at this. Babes. You're talking about a child, an immature child will rule over them, and the people shall be oppressed one by another and everyone by his neighbor. The child shall behave proudly against the ancient, the base and the honorable. When a man shall take hold of his brother, the house of his father, saying, You got clothes, be our ruler, and let him be let and let his ruin be under thine hand. Let me come down there where women will rule over them. All right, verse 12, as for my children, it says, as for my children, children are the oppressor, and women rule over them. O oh, my people, they which lead thee cause thee to error and to destroy the way of thy past. Yahweh stands up to plead and standeth to judge his people. Let's look at it in, in legacy. 3 and 11. Woe to the wicked. It should go badly with them. But what is he dealt out will be done to him. Oh, my people, their taskmasters are infants and women rule over them. Oh, my people who lead you astray. Do you remember when you first start reading in the Bible? One of the problems is that women want to rule. Let me show you. And they're going to say this to the world. This ain't got nothing to do with church. Huh? They're going to say this to the world. This ain't got nothing to do with church. That's why I don't like church. <laughs> they don't really care that much about what God has to say. But see, I mean, when I'm, I'm in the book, I just, you know, I don't have a famous name and all of that, but God to see you where you are. All right, look at what he says. He... He says, and Yahweh said to the serpent, because you have done this, you are cursed more than any of the cattle and more than every beast of the field. And on your belly you shall go, and thus you will eat all the days of your life. And I will put enmity, hostility, I will put enmity between your seed, serpent, and her seed, human. And he shall bruise you on the head. Oh, oh, oh. No, no, Papa, stay Don't cry. I don't want to take. Come on. Who bother you? Who You ready? And and between your seed and her seed, he shall bruise you on the head, and you shall bruise him on the heel. Listen to this. To the woman he said, I will greatly multiply your pain and your conception. In pain you will bear children. Your desire will be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. Your desire, your inclination will be to your husband and he shall rule over you. People may not have any idea what that means. So in order to see what that means, let's look at chapter four. Okay. We talk about Cain and Abel and we say, God asking, what have you done? The voice of your brother's blood is crying to me out of the ground. And now cursed are you from the ground, which is open her mouth to receive your uh, your brother's blood from your hand. When you cultivate the ground, it will no longer yield its strength to you. You will be a you will be a vagrant and a wanderer on the earth. Cain said to Yahweh, "My punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, you have driven me this day from the face of the ground, and your face will be hidden. And say, and from your face I will be hidden." And I will be a vagrant and a wanderer in the earth. And it will be that whoever finds me will kill me. 
Yahweh said, therefore, whoever kills Cain, vengeance will be taken on him sevenfold. And Yahweh appointed a sign for Cain so that whoever found him would not strike him. Now Cain went out of the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod. That's the land of wandering eastward in Eden. Okay. Now, what we got to do is see all of this stuff that happened to him. Then we see that when they came, it happened in the course of time. Cain brought his Abe offering. Abel brought his offering. Cain got upset. Remember that? Cain, let's see. For, but for Cain, his offering, he had no regard. So Cain became very angry and his countenance fell. Yahweh said to Cain, why are you angry? Why is your countenance fallen? If you do well, will, your, will not your countenance be lifted up? And if you do not well, sin is lying at the door and its desire is for you, but you must rule over him. Sin is lying at the door. Sin's desire is to rule over you. Sin is lying at the door. It's desire for you, but you must rule over it. When we go back to chapter three, look at it. What he says in chapter three to the woman. Well, he says to the woman when he when he said what's going to happen. And he says, your desire will be to your husband and he will rule over you. It's the same kind of thing he's saying to Cain. You must rule over sin. You cannot let sin rule over you. And your God is saying that to the woman, you're going to want to rule the husband, but he will rule over you. Um, we also know God didn't choose any women to be uh, the 12 patriarchs. We don't see any of their names on the 12 pillars in heaven or the 12 apostles that are in heaven. We don't see him sending them out. We don't see a lot of stuff, but people are going to do what they want to do because they go to church and the church set up the rule and people go to school and they can buy their priesthood. All right, let's go back to Jeremiah. He says, but they have turned their back to me, not the face. I taught them rising up early teaching, but they would not listen. But they put their detestable things in the house, which is called by my name, to defile it. They're just like people put their trees up in there. They put their stars. They they put their elves, their stockings. They, they, they do stuff. They put their twitching and their twerking in the church. He says, they put their detestable things in the house, which is called by my name, to so defile it. And they built the high places for Baal that are in the valley of ben Hinnom to cause their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire to Molech. So now we got them defiling the house of God. Now we also see them, they're, all, they're sending their children to the fire. He said, which I did not command them, nor had it come into my heart that they should do this abomination to cause the Judah to sin. So now, therefore, thus saith Yahweh, the God of Israel, concerning this city to which you are saying it is given to the hand of the king of Babylon by famine. Behold, I will gather them out of the lands. Listen, this is this is where your turn come. So let's make sure you get it. So therefore, as he's saying that Judah's done this, they offer the children to the fire, they've done abominable things, so they are changes. So now, therefore, thus saith Yahweh, the God of Israel, concerning this city which you are saying, it is given to the hand of the king of Babylon by the sword, by the famine, and by pestilence. Behold, I will gather them out of all of the lands which I have banished them, in other words, they've been banished, they've been in captivity, they've been cursed, they've been sent out of the land, which I have banished them in my anger and in my wrath. And in great indignation, I will cause them to return to this place and make them inhabit in safety. We see some of that take place in the book of Ezra. And it says, and they shall be my people. And I will be their God. This is notice. This is after repentance when they turn back around. And they shall be my people. I will be their gods. And I will give them one heart and one way that they may fear me always for their own good and for the good of the children, their children after them. 
and I will cut an everlasting covenant with them, and I will not turn away from them to do them good. And I will put the fear of me in their heart so that they will not turn away from me. And I will rejoice over them to do them good. And I will truly plant them in this land with all my heart and with all my soul. For thus saith Yahweh, just as I brought this great evil on this people, so am I going to bring on them the good that I am promising them. The fields will be bought in this land, of which you are saying it is the desolation. That land that he's bought, it's a desolation. That land that he bought, that's a land that's a wasteland. The word here is simama. Okay. It's a, it's a desolation without man, beast. It is given to the hand of the Chaldeans. Men will buy fields for money, but Jeremiah, you've already bought yours. Sign and seal the deeds and call witnesses in the land of Benjamin and the surroundings of Jerusalem and the city of Judah and the cities of the hill country and the cities of Shephelah and in the cities of Neg Negev, for I will return their fortunes, declare Yahweh. When he says he's going to make an everlasting covenant with them, that goes back to what he said he was going to do in the, chap the chapter that was before it, when you looked at uh, Jeremiah 31, because in Jeremiah 31 and 31, he said what he was going to do. He was going to make a new covenant with the house of Israel, with the house of Judah, not like the covenant I cut with their fathers and I took them by the hand and brought them out of Egypt. My covenant, they broke, but I was a husband to them. This is the covenant that I will cut with the house of Israel after those days, declare Yahweh. I will put my law in them, and on their heart will I write it. I will be their God. They will be my people. That's what Jeremiah is talking about. And you see that the fulfillment of that is given in Hebrews 8 and 10. Hebrews 8 and 10 says, when you look at it, he says, for this is the covenant that I will cut or that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says Yahweh, I will put my laws in their minds. I will write them upon their hearts. Uh, and they say, I will write them upon their hearts and I will write them and I will be their God and they shall be my people. They shall not teach everyone his fellow citizen and every brother saying, know the Lord, for they all will know me. From the least of them to the greatest, I will be merciful to their iniquities. The only way he can be merciful to their iniquities, they had to repent and turn from their wicked ways. And he says, then I will remember their sins no more. Because when you turn from your wicked sins and you come to him, he said, I won't remember your sins. But if you turn from your righteousness, he won't remember your righteousness. So Jeremiah 32 is showing that why God had to bring his judgment, why God did what he did to them because they got he gave them all that favor, all that blessing. They prospered and they got things, but then they turned away and they started worshiping other gods. They started not obeying his word, doing what he said. That king felt like he was in control. He did not give me to give God the glory and honor that he deserved. And he said, I'm going to bring judgment on them. So he brought judgment on the king. And he brought judgment on the land. But then he says, I'm going to I'm going to turn my heat off for you all, because what happens is when he puts them in captivity and he works out his judgment on them, what normally happens is the people eventually repent. So you didn't really see the repentance in that part. But that's what happens in order for him to forgive people like that. So that's what you're looking at in that chapter. I don't know why they would pick that chapter unless what they are trying to do is show the goodness of the Most High God. But it always comes on the heel of judgment when the people have been so wicked and they had, they had earned their wickedness because they had determined, we're not going to do what you say. You can't tell us. Know who you think you are. So the most I got what the black folks say, put that thing on them. Okay. And let's look at um one last thing. 
Jeremiah 52 and 10. It says, um, let's look at 52 and 8, because Jeremiah prophesied something to him. So in Jeremiah 52 and 8, it says, the army, the army of the Chaldeans pursued the king and overtook Zedekiah in the plains of Jericho, and all his army was scattered from him. Then they took the king and carried him and carried him up to the king of Babylon to Riblah in the land of Hamath, where he gave judgment upon him. And the king of Babylon slew the sons of Zedekiah before his eyes. He also slew all of the princes of Judah in Rimlin, Riblah. Then he put out the eyes of Zedekiah, the king of Babylon, and brought him in chains and carried him to Babylon and put him in prison until the day of his death. Now, in the fifth month, in the tenth day of the month, which is the 19th year of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of the guard who served the king of Babylon into Jerusalem and burnt the house of the Lord and the king's house and all the houses of Jerusalem and all the houses of the great men were burnt with fire. So the very thing Jeremiah prophesied that he was locked up for happened. And you can see that in on the 50 the 52nd chapter i just started at verse 8 so that you would have that so i don't know if that helps you or not but at least we went through it yeah you said 51 though 51 and 8 but and 52 and no, 8. it's 52 I, that i misspoke i'm glad you okay i'm glad you were looking with me okay yeah yeah so did that help any? Yeah, that's good. That's good. All I right. have a little interruption from this little papa. <laughs> so I'll, yeah, that's I'll, good. So I bet it, I bet it. How long this lesson tomorrow? So what I'll do is I'll uh, go ahead and shut the message down and see if I can save it. If if I can send it to YouTube under private, I'll do it for you. Okay. Okay. Well, man, I if appreciate I can't, that. If you I, enjoy your evening. If I can't do it under private, I'll just put it up there anyway so that you can have access to it, all right? Okay, sounds good. So may the most I bless you, keep you, and make his face shine upon you, be gracious to you. By the way, um, I got a building that, that I'm going to, and mm -hmm. you may have to do some, because you know, if somebody else had to see this, they don't have to know all your business, but you may have to seal up the top of that building. It's a, it's a nice building that would need to be sealed up, okay? It ain't the one we went to, is it? This is, no, this is a smaller one. Oh, much, gotcha. much, much smaller and newer. So uh, I, I think that 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 should help. That should help some at, at least. The real key is, is that he had promised what he was going to do. The judgment came and they tried to fight against the judgment. They tried to fight against what God said. And it came to pass. It happened. And that lets you know that all these people that are talking about good, 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 it does not erase when the most high God say, no, I'm going to bust that tail. Mm -hmm. He say, I'm going to bust it. He's going to bust it. All right, man. Good night. All right. All right. Good night. Appreciate it. All right, man. Much love to you. Bye. Stay here.